In this video, I'm going to show you exactly step by step how you can start with the historical optimization of your old blog posts and old pages to double your organic traffic and leads for your business. Hey, what's up marketers? I'm Edward Ziak from B2BDigitalMarketers.com. Historical optimization of old blog posts is one of the most efficient strategies marketers can use to drive high organic traffic and leads for their business. 51% of companies say updating old content has proven the most efficient tactic implemented. This simple yet powerful strategy can increase your article lifespan and fill up your content marketing calendar. But historical optimization strategy is overlooked by many marketers and unfortunately only 38% of bloggers are updating all the articles. But to get on top of the Google search results, you must start updating your old content to keep it fresh and up to date. Because according to Ahrefs research, the average top 10 ranking pages is two plus years old. And those that rank at position number one are almost three years old on average. That means new articles rarely show up on top of the page. And if you want to have a chance, you must start optimizing your old pages because nobody will visit outdated content on your website. So if you find this video valuable, make sure to subscribe to my YouTube channel because I post every week new video to help you level up your digital marketing effectively. And without further ado, let's get started with the historical optimization of your old articles or pages. The first step, how to start with the historical optimization of your old blog post, you must analyze the blog post that used to perform very well on the search engine, but not anymore. And this is a relatively simple task to do that if you were using Search Google Console since the beginning you have your website. So head inside your Google Search Console and go to Performance and select Pages next to the Queries tab. In this section, you can see all your indexed pages, how many impressions they are getting, their average position, click-through rate, what countries are visiting them the most, and etc. Now, Let's change the date so you can see the data from a year back and decide which blog posts need historical optimization to increase ranking, organic traffic and lead generation. All right, once you have changed your date, then simply check blog posts that have a lot of impressions one by one. Here, you are searching for blog posts that used to have a high ranking with a lot of clicks and high impressions. Also, if you have a historical data within your CRM or any other software, knowing what blog post drove the greatest number of subscribers or leads will help you to make a better decision. But I would not spend too long on this as there is a lot of work waiting for you. So just take an hour or two to find the best 20 blog posts on your website that needs an update. The second step, after you have decided what blog post you want to start with the historical optimization, you have to find relevant keywords that your blog post rank for, but you did not mention them. Again, go back to your Google Search Console profile and click on the selected blog post, which will show clicks, impression, click-through rate, and average position only for the selected page. All right, once you have clicked on the page, then you can see all the information to start with the historical optimization for your selected old content. Here, I want you to click on the queries to see all the keywords your old blog post was and is ranking for and also sort the keywords by the highest number of impressions by clicking on impressions. Also, do not forget to display all four statistics, total of clicks, total impressions, average click-through rate and average position. 
so you can get an accurate picture of how the keyword is performing. I would start with the keywords that got a lot of impressions but not a lot of clicks. You can see it as those keywords have a low click-through rate percentage. Okay, once you start searching for the keywords within your Google Search Console, also I want you to open the odd article that you want to optimize and use the search bar to search keywords within your blog content. You can just click on Ctrl F or Command F on Mac and search bar will pop up on the top right corner. And now we will search for keywords that your old blog post was ranking for, but you have not covered it or even properly mentioned it within the article. Just go one by one. And if you feel like the particular keyword was mentioned more than enough, I would say at least two to three times should be enough. And then go to the next one. Here you are searching for one to two keywords that your old blog post are getting quite a lot of impressions and also have the potential to expand your old blog articles as another topic and add extra value and information that you have not included previously. In my example, I have found two keywords, how to measure core web vitals and core web vital tools that I have not used within my article, but are excellent for to be included. And like this, you will find related topics that are not included within your old blog content and you can expand on the blog post. The next third step to do historical optimization of old blog content is to include your newly found keywords slash topics within your article. This is relatively simple. Just open your Word or any document program and write the new section of your old blog post. So in my case, for the core web vital article, I will add extra two more sections based on the two keywords I have found within Google Search Console. So my article will include this extra section based on the found keywords I have mentioned, how to measure core web vitals and essential tools to use for core web vitals. And like this, I can expand my article by another 60 to 1000 words, depending on how deep I can go and how many subsections I will include. Because remember, the longer the article gets, the more keywords it can rank for and yield better results. Bloggers who write articles of 2000 plus words are far more likely to have strong results, but not everyone can write 2000 plus words all the time. And like this, you don't need to. So this strategy not only helps you to increase your ranking for those keywords, but generally for all queries within the old blog post and also add extra new keywords that the article can rank for in the future. So I hope you are getting the rhythm of how you should go about the historical optimization of all pages. But there are a few more steps to effectively apply a historical optimization strategy for your content marketing. The fourth step is to read your entire article and update any outdated resources you have used within your old blog post, like statistics, case studies, graphs, visuals, and other materials you have used within your old article or page. As time goes by and you are getting better or your company is getting better, there are always things we can improve within our old articles. Because I believe you and I are at least a bit smarter and wiser than a year ago. And therefore, if you will read your old article, you can explain some things better and provide more details, for example. Also, you can add more visuals and data within your old blog post to prove your points even more. According to a recent Orbit Media study, while only 75% of bloggers that place 10 or more photos in the article say it's effective, only 3% of bloggers actually do this. 
or sometimes you will find yourself talking absolute nonsense and you will have to rewrite the whole section to fix that. Therefore, always make sure you not only add extra sections, but refresh the whole article with the latest trends, stats and information, more relevant visuals and others to improve the quality of your old articles. Because like this, you can make sure that Google will not penalize you, as Google can actually penalize you for republishing old content without adding extra value. And while it is difficult to say how much you need to change within the article, I believe that adding an extra section or two, updating information and visuals, and rewriting some of the section is enough to successfully republish blog articles for Google to reward you with a better ranking, more impressions and more organic traffic to your republished article. Once you have rewritten your old article, now you have to optimize it for your current conversion path to not only generate organic traffic, but leads for your business as well. Also, you have to optimize it with SEO. This means replacing any old call to action with a new one, adding or changing your content upgrades with the latest one and more relevant, and use middleman method to increase the authority of your product and service pages. The important aspect of this part is to ensure your blog post follow your current buyer journey to ensure your users can also convert as a leads for your business. Because the number one goal for writing articles is to attract your B2B target audience to your website and convert them into leads for your business. Also, very important part is to optimize your old blog article with SEO strategies to ensure you are not referring to invalid pages like 3, 4 and 5xx pages, having old meta description, forgetting update your internal linking, having pictures without alt text and forgetting adding outbound links to your post. And of course, there are more B2B SEO strategies for blog posts that you should check and optimize your old blog post with. Because writing an excellent article could be wasted if you are not following SEO guidelines. Because writing great articles also includes optimizing it with the SEO strategies to get the best results from your hard work. Once you have finished all the steps for historical optimization of all blog posts and pages, now it's time to change the published date within your article. This is very simple. If you are using WordPress or any other CMS for your website, as you can just simply select publish on and change it to your actual date and time. The setting might differ based on what version of article editor you are using. For me, I'm using the Avada theme, so I have changed it to the default setting to show you. Here is how it looks like for the default version. And here is the second version if you are using Gutenberg Block Editor. Both versions you can find on the top right corner. Also, if you are using some of the premium WordPress themes, it might differ. And therefore, ask them for help to show where you can change the published date within their team. After updating the date to your current one, simply hit publish and take the URL of your historical optimized article and paste it into Google Search Console URL inspection. So Google can crawl it again and discover it faster, your newly updated blog article, and you can see the results faster. Usually it takes a couple of minutes, but on some occasions it can take a day or even a week so be patient. And the last step you should take is to promote your newly historical optimized article the same way as you do when you publish a new article on your website. 
Well, this step is totally up to you and the way how you are promoting your article. But if you are not promoting your new articles in a way I recommend you to start promoting. Because promoting your content helps you get the initial engagement, which is important for your article to quickly start ranking at the better positions than 70 plus. Therefore, always make sure you are promoting your new articles and your newly optimized articles as well. And the very last thing I want to share with you is some of the best practices for historical optimization of your old blog articles and pages to ensure you are getting the best results. So here are the six best historical optimization practices of old blog posts and pages I want to mention. First, focus on older than 12 months articles that used to perform above average as a first. Second, always make sure your content has at least 20% new content before you resubmit the page, so you avoid getting a penalty from Google. Third, updating your call to actions is an important aspect for you to not only drive organic traffic, but convert that traffic into leads. Fourth, add new or more relevant offers to increase your conversion rate. I prefer to focus on keywords my article rank most and add offers based on that. Fifth, you should add a historical optimization strategy into your marketing mix as a regular part of your marketing activities. Sixth, also update blog posts that have a high conversion rate but do not get that much attention. This is a great and easy way to increase leads for your business. And these are some of the best practices for your historical optimization. Once you will start optimizing your content, you will quickly find out that it's a lot easier than writing an entirely new article. And that's all from me. Thank you for watching. I hope you have learned something new. So don't forget to subscribe to my YouTube channel, like this video and share it on social media. And leave a comment below why you think historical optimization is important. By the way, check out all my links in the description for digital marketing tools to save your time, energy and get better results from your marketing. Ciao!